Hello, and welcome to episode 19 of the Barn Door Restoration. Uh, last episode, I covered the cross members for the rear floor, the I-beam style cross members. Uh, this episode, I'm going to cover the piece of frame that holds the steering box in place. Uh, so the way these are set up, the steering box uh, sets in here up against the frame, uh, comes up and it clamps to the dash pod it sets here and the way it mounts has this cast iron bracket and it slides over the steering box and has two bolts up go up through the clamp it and five bolts that bolt it to the frame the steering box is very similar to the uh, the later split window buses except it turns backwards the geometry for the steering linkages are different on these so the frame that was in this was in very bad shape uh, this is it here and uh, it sets in right about there um, it welds to this support which is supports the pedals and it welds into a bracket in the front here which holds the front balance yeah this one was in very poor shape um, in fact when I was moving the bus around under its own power I had a wood clamp clamping it in here so the box wouldn't roll around when I was trying to steer. So this bracket has the tube that holds the the brake pedal and the clutch pedal. Uh, so when this welds in, uh, the clutch pedal comes up through this slot here and the brake pedal comes up here. And there's a stop for the brake pedal. I was lucky that the tube uh, was still good on this. A little pitting, but most of it was inside the frame where you can't see it. There was no wear inside the tube, uh, so it was all in good condition. And also, it was threaded on the bottom for a, a, a grease fitting to grease it. So, the nuts for this bracket are actually welded inside of this. Uh, so, to build this, pretty simple process is two channels, uh, and it's 1.9 millimeter thick steel. So I used 14 gauge, which is basically exactly 1.9. Uh, meant two channels to slide inside each other. Uh, welded the nuts on the inside uh, for the bracket. And then I welded this tube, I tacked this tube in place. It, it sticks out five millimeters on this side. So I made up a little jig, a few pieces of metal uh, to hold it in place, tacked it, and then I was able to flip it over and then completely weld it in. Then I slid the inside piece in, um, clamped it, and spot welded it. I didn't use my spot welder. I used a TIG welder for it. Uh, it was mentioned that uh, using a TIG welder to spot weld actually works quite well. Uh, so I decided to try it out. The other thing is I was planning on ordering some, some copper to make uh, custom electrodes for my spot welder. And I never got around to ordering them. <laughs> so I tried out the TIG. So it worked great, but it did take some fiddling to get it working right. Uh, my test pieces worked great. Uh, I dialed in the amperage uh, to get the, the quality of a uh, weld I wanted. And about 120 amps for two layers of 14 gauge worked good. Uh, when I went to weld this, the first four spot welds went perfect. And uh, then I had an issue with some spots where it was uh, blowing through. It was actually punching a hole in the top layer instead of welding. And a few different things were happening. One, if there was any mill scale at all, uh, it would sometimes cause an issue, sometimes not. So I made sure I cleaned all that off. Uh, the other issue, if the metal needs to be in contact, the two layers. Uh, so if the angle of this bend was off just a hair and I was clamped on the outside edge, it left a slight air gap between the two layers where I was trying to weld. And I think it was not transferring the heat properly. So I had to be very careful to make sure those layers are clamped tight together. Uh, also, I didn't realize I had run out of argon in my tank, which did not help things at all. I was able to turn the flow up and get the rest of it going. but uh, So it's a process that works. Uh, just this first time I've done it. so. Had a little some issues with it, but uh, I think in the future I'll, there's a few areas I'm going to use that same technique with the TIG. 
so I'm happy with how this turns out. It looks quite original. Uh, there's a lot of little details to it. It's a pretty simple part, but it seemed like there's it took longer than I expected. Uh, so another thing I wanted to cover, I think it was in the comments, uh, I was asked uh, if it's cheaper to build your own parts. Uh, short answer is no. <laughs> it's not cheaper. Um, when I started this project, one of the things I wanted to do was build as many parts as I possibly could myself. And that's part of the reason is that I get a huge amount of satisfaction creating this. Um, I do not get satisfaction from getting replacement metal in the mail. I like doing the work. It's about the journey, the process, building the parts, the challenge, uh, you know, trying to figure out how to assemble stuff and put it together and make it work correctly. That's what I enjoy. Now, in the beginning, when I started this, I had to do a little bit of work to justify building my parts instead of buying them. Uh, for instance, a brake big enough to build these parts costs more than all the parts. So I, I couldn't justify that. Um, and that's why I built my own brake. That's why I buy a cheap bead roller and modified it. Uh, that's why I got other cheap tools and I've you know, figured out how to make them work for me or modify them to make them work properly. Uh, because the tooling is so expensive. So, uh, yeah, if you're going to build your own parts, you do it because you really enjoy the process. Or you want a perfect piece. Uh, maybe you can't get. It's not available. There's a lot of good quality parts out there. They're not necessarily easy to find. You have to shop around for them. And a lot of parts are built uh, to fit multiple years. These burn doors changed a lot through the years. I mean, they only built for five years, but uh, there was a lot of little changes. A lot of the parts are will fit, uh, but they're not quite correct. You know, the notches might not be in the right spot, or the holes are the wrong size, or there's other little things, little details that uh, don't really make any difference, <laughs> except to the person building it, I guess. Uh, I like that sort of thing. I like to make it as close and perfect as it can be. I'm doing that for me. That's my my enjoyment. I like doing that. So that's another reason to build your own parts. Uh, but in the end, it's 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 always going to be cheaper to buy them. Now, uh, well, I guess that's about it for this episode. Uh, oh, I'm not sure if I mentioned that the drones uh, for this have been uploaded to GrabCAD. So it's a Nova Scotia barn door. Uh, on GrabCAD. Uh, there'll be a link in the description, maybe. Anyway, uh, last episode I uploaded the rear floor uh, drawings for all the uh, uh, structure. Uh, next episode, I'm going to rebuild uh, this pedal frame. Uh, it's just too bad a shape to, re to uh, try and repair. There's too many issues with it. There, there's bends, there's well, there's holes through it. It's yeah. So I'm going to rebuild that for my next episode. And I'm going to try to get episodes out a lot more often. <laughs> uh, try to get one out every two weeks. I've, I have not been spending as much time in the shop as I had hoped this fall. Uh, there's too much other stuff going on. But hopefully now the holidays are almost over. Um, I can get back in here uh, on a regular basis. Oh, keep watching for some... Uh, video of building this and uh, yeah thanks for watching
Thank you.